morning, 47. Your destination is the coastal town of Sapienza, also known as the Jewel of the Amalfi Coast. Your target is a former client of ours, Silvio Caruso, a brilliant but troubled bioengineer employed by the Ether Biotech Corporation. Renowned for his early stem cell research, Caruso is now reportedly working on a far more disturbing project, a DNA-specific virus able to infect anyone, anywhere in the world. Imagine a bullet, fired in any direction, passing through countless bodies without inflicting harm, invisible and undetectable until it strikes its target. A world of armchair assassins killing with impunity. This is what awaits us, unless Caruso is stopped. Our client, one of Ether's major private stockholders, wants the project cancelled on ethical grounds, but without destroying the company in the process. She has asked us to eliminate Silvio Caruso and destroy the yet unfinished virus prototype. You will also need to deal with Caruso's lab head, Francesca DeSantis, a high-level Ether employee and cutthroat corporate climber who holds intimate knowledge of Caruso's research and could potentially carry on in his place. This is no ordinary contract, 47. Caruso's virus is a serious threat to our craft and trade, not to mention our core ideals. So failure is not an option. I'll leave you to prepare. And here we are for a Roulette Rivals 7 PC Winners Bracket Round 2 match between the two rookies of Daniel 1RD and Mario. Joining me on the Shoutcast is our match admin in for fun. Welcome. Hi, Cory. Hi, everyone. Excited for this match between two rookies, both of the both players having the first ever Roulette Rivals match, which is always a nice spectacle. Hopefully they do well in these two maps. Indeed. First map is going to be Sapienza, chosen by Daniel, and second map, Whistleton Creek, picked by Mario. The two bands were Berlin and Dartmoor, so those can't, uh, can't come up in a possible random map or decider at the end. If we have a tie or, like, if neither player has reached four points uh, after the two maps, we will just Prepare continue yourself. playing. Um, but Nine, the spin eight, is arriving seven, momentarily six, for a spin off five, this match. Do you want to go ahead and run it down for us in for fun? Three, two, I nine, sure do after three, finishing this three, conversation with one of the players, but it is live now. It is Silvio Caruso next snap as Plague Doctor and Francesca Descent is loud explosive weapon as the butler. All right. <clears throat> Nothing too... Uh... Extraordinary, I think. Uh, of course, you have the loud explosive weapon, which is a loud kill, and it's not uh, like you have to somehow take care of the body. You can't just leave it lying around um, because it's ballistic kill. The butler disguise can be a bit tricky to get, I think, if you if you don't know, if you don't didn't prepare for it or anything. But I guess uh, the other side, Sylvia Caruso's next snap as Plague Doctor is pretty easy because it's it's right there. Um, Plague Doctor in the observatory where you usually um, isolate Silvio anyways at next snap. Uh, very hard to find on this map. It's probably one of the easiest Silvio combinations for sure and Francesca will be a tiny bit challenging but Mario's already in and uh, after I had some talk with Daniel about how the uh, spin link works and the done button, which is <laughs> which ought to be pressed after finishing. It's kind of on me. Uh, but I think after that cleared out, hopefully he can also get going. And we could already see one attempt by Mario who got found trespassing in the kitchen in the suit. But he has ideas of uh, how to approach this map for sure. Indeed. Uh, Mario starting uh, ICA safe house, not default start, but another suit start uh, has a. An explosive, I think this is, should be a loud one because it's not a breacher and everything apart from breacher is loud. Um, also in this loadout is a, now a Krugermeyer, yet a full auto pistol B-25 
before, I think, and the stream is buffering a bit for me. Same here. Okay, let's hope. Oh, okay, there it is again. Um, Krugermeyer for distraction shots and a dart gun. Didn't quite catch which one it was. Um, I'd be hoping to catch up now and focus on the action. I think Daniel is also... Uh, finishing his loadout now, uh, currently identified a loud explosive weapon, MK2 loud explosive, not often seen, but we have work out no doubt and also knows to bring an EMP for the virus, so obviously these players know, uh, like a, in a general sense, how Sapienza is going to work out with uh, the two targets and the virus. Indeed, uh, we could just see Mario shooting the observatory to get Silvio uh, moving. Is not opting to instantly go for Francesca here, um, which is, I think, what we usually see on Sapienza. Players uh, basically instantly rushing up to catch that magical 230 mark, uh, where I can really, really easily isolate her in her office. Um, however, obviously not the not the only solution to that. Mario. Also obtaining a Plague Doctor disguise. Uh, basically having ready everything ready for his first kill here. I uh, assume has a Trank gun to get or to take care of uh, Silvio's guards. Or at least one of them. Um, but... Oh, Silvio's stopping at a very <laughs> unfortunate time. And uh, this is an approach not really often seen. But luckily the guards won't shuffle around and that will be three big KOs and the next snap on Silvio should be the first kill of this match. Nice, Mario's first kill of RR. And uh, very well done, just over two minutes. Indeed. Daniel restarting, uh, has loaded in as well, just now um, started. Mansion security. Possibly to get spawn closer to Francesca at the start, do something with her. Um, like that has a remote emetic gas device, so you might. Uh, yeah, it looks like he'll be using that to emetic Francesca, but gets spotted by some enforcers around there. Certainly a good idea, though. Uh, it's not often seen uh, quick Francesca isolation, but we are talking about two in mansion disguises. You don't necessarily have to go for the meta two and a half minute Francesca isolation. But speaking of that, Mario had good knowledge of the cycles. And after the Silvio kill, he just approached Francesca, but was just five or 10 seconds too late. And uh, might be missing Francesca. But as I say that, it's a chainler into this side room. And Mario gets it done brilliantly. And what was interesting here, he had a first thrown distraction. Some oh, the discard. But yeah, the body will be found. That's unlucky. Gonna get found. It's gonna get Francesca found. However, he did a thrown distraction on the roof, like at the ceiling of the uh, the room there, and it looked like Francesca was heading somewhere upstairs, which would be interesting. Or like she she was heading out of the room to investigate something. Um, so that that might be interesting. To yeah, you're right. That with was that. <laughs> I, I love it already, like, it was... He was in cover, so I'm not 100% sure if that was intentional or not, but if it was, it was really smart choice for, for a first distraction, and Francesca went for it, and of course you can chain it while she's in the room. Uh, but what he found, unfortunately, I think this is a, it's mostly an improvisation after a tiny bit too slow Silvio kill, but if this whole kill is done just a bit earlier, then I think Francesca won't be an issue. Yeah, uh, definitely possible. Mario is sticking to what he has done previously and has, what has worked for him. Meanwhile, Daniel has Francesca isolated in her bathroom. I think planted the explosive next to her. Uh, he is now going to manually get the tape for the Silvio lure and uses that, I think, to to get Silvio to the observatory. I think he self-isolates him there even with the tape, does he? Uh, he calls the guards to leave. I don't know if that's permanent or 
temporary, but that is in isolation. And as far as isolations go, Daniel has to restart because after the KO on Francesca, the the VIP, VIP guards went in there, sadly. Indeed. Can just quickly refresh the player streams here, see. If that changes anything. Daniel, after that restart, uh, rethinking his loadout here. Uh, starting Gardener now. Well, Daniel gets the Silvio kill done nicely now. Has yellow guns right now. Opens that door just... <laughs> Buddy's lying there. It's a bit risky, but... Looks like it either shut in time again or the card doesn't. Um, didn't, and that was see. the difference though because uh, Mario is just 10 or so seconds quicker and at 2.37 38 he gets the KO on Francesca and has just enough time to drag her into the side room and if a KO happens this way then the VIPs don't home in there, at least not uh, immediately there's the setup and is Mario thinking of the keycard or something else as well? I wonder. Maybe he wants to take care of the guards just in case. Um... Oh, that's an illegal action. Oh. Doesn't matter, you're the bodyguard. <laughs> Gets away with it. Indeed. Yeah, I think I think he might want uh, might look to just get rid of that guard to make sure he doesn't like run into that room and find the body at some point. I can understand the paranoia though. Oh, uh, yeah, these guards are very random and to my experience actually the second guard is more random so if you take care of this one then your situation yeah. becomes just a bit worse. Of course I can't blame Mario for wanting to take it safe and uh, speaking of safe he there's a distraction for the housekeeper lady so that he can safely seek her the butler. He has a strategy for this disguise not the easiest but uh, we'll work out for him and that's an isolation in just about a minute. Mario's getting quite close to his first ever map win. Indeed, I'm not sure if he has a an EMP in his loadout though. Uh, didn't ask just yet. Uh, if he has, that's perfectly fine for him. Easy way to take care of the virus. Uh, cameras. Also, he does have an EMP. Okay, that's great. One of the most essential items on Sapienza, I guess. Um, yep, I could also see it in the inventory, but confirmation from Kaneta. Daniel with Loud Pistol infiltrating from below, from the basement. Just like in the kitchen, we see the panic. I think you see another panic now. I think he gets the observatory with no more interaction. And if he shoots the panel, then he's in a very similar situation to Mario. We'll not do it just yet, and we can see later if he wants to go for Francesca first or Silvio. But yeah, Mario with a kill and a setup down. We'll just get to the virus and finish with two clicks, hopefully. Yeah, gotta make sure not to mess up the, your, your buttons there. Uh, obviously, the Francesca kill is loud. So... You'd want to do that very last. Um, and yeah, also still needs to take care of the evidence. And there's a suggestion to not take the EMP early. And this is what we'll see. And I think this is a trigger for the bodyguards to home in on Francesca, which will be very unfortunate. Mario is going for the exit. That's not good because he has the he doesn't have green guns yet and he won't get it back doesn't detonate <laughs> realize oh, it's the yeah, last think... second but he's in a hostile area and i don't uh... think he can get away with this he does mm -hmm. for the time being if he's lucky this room is just empty now because the guard ran out and he can just take a quick shot on the evidence yeah there is no guard in there it's bullet impact notice 
But if you can lag it to the exit. He needs to go the other direction, not the usual one, but without cameras. Now he can get there. Hostile area, quick whooshes. But he gets to the exit, so a detonation in three seconds should give him the win. There's he, the exit prompt. And there it is. Whew. What a way to end his first roulette rivals map. Green guns exit from Mario. Six minutes in game time. Five star SA as required. And uh, the <laughs> first two points to him. Oh, I really. I'm a <laughs> I have a hard time speaking. What well, a way to finish your first ever spin indeed. But he gets the lead in this match and his map coming up next. Indeed. Should be 23 past the hour. Alright. Um, yeah. First map Sapienzo just ended, which was Daniel's map pick. Mario was able to take that. We're now moving on to Whittleton Creek in four minutes and a little bit. Let's surely give us time to catch our breaths and have a quick look at the mission briefing for Whittleton Creek. Gentlemen, let's go over the plan. The first constant is none other than Janus the legendary Cold War spy master, a KGB senior officer and head of the sixth column special branch at Lubienka, Janus is a certified genius and expert of counterintelligence. He retired from the KGB in 1988 when he fell out of favor with the Kremlin and defected to the US. Shortly after, the Soviet Union collapsed. Now, it is unclear when Janus stepped down as the constant but since 2004, he has been a resident of a quiet community in suburban Vermont. Mr. Gray. Right. So here's the catch. As an elite KGB agent, Janus was trained to withstand interrogation and torture. No amount of pressure will force him to disclose information he doesn't want to. Instead, we will need to search his home for clues. But if Providence learns of our presence, the game is up. So we frame Janus make Providence think he was the real Shadow Client. Correct. I will file a false ICA report, claiming to have traced a number of calls from Janus's house to the Institute in Romania. The case will seem clear. Mr. Gray was only a figurehead. Janus was pulling the strings all along. And by eliminating him, we will have neutralized the militia once and for all. However, for this subterfuge to work, you'll also need to deal with Janus's security detail. A Providence Herald and former Secret Service agent by the name of Nolan Cassidy. Intel describes him as diligent and inquisitive, and we cannot risk that he contradicts our story to his employer. Seems workable. I certainly hope so. Everything depends on this next move, 47. You made this our fight. Now let's even the playing field. And we are back for the second map of the Roulette Rivals 7 PC winner bracket round 2. Daniel 1RD versus Mario match. I am still joined by Infrafun. Welcome. Hello, I am still here. <laughs> I just uh, trying to gather my thoughts after the Sapiens and just in general about Mario. Uh, I do have nice, to say, nice things to say about uh, both rookies. I think they really well prepared. Although Daniel did say that he hasn't really practiced, he it does seem to have good instincts. But about Mario, when we came back, we already saw this uh, Whittleton preparation and <laughs> basically just gets uh, the politician's assistant first try. And I think this is a really good sign for his tournament. He, he, he shall be a very promising rookie. Indeed. Um, yeah, politician's assistant, not one of the easiest disguises to grab in Whittleton Creek. Uh, there are numerous disguises that can be a bit more difficult to obtain. Uh, politician's assistant, politician himself, uh, and yeah, ju just to name a few. And uh, also another map with secondary mission objectives. Sapienza had the virus, uh, elim eliminating that, and 
Woodland Creek has the clues. Um, yeah, every speedrunner I love these secondary objectives, and <laughs> I guess it's a nice theme of this match that uh, both of these maps have those options, and I may or may not know already if map number three is another one of these or not. I wonder how many more maps with secondary objectives are there. There are Whittle, uh, not Will and Greed, there are New York and Dartmoor, and... Well, technically, there's like the optional stuff of data core and everything in, in Chongqing, which technically is a secondary objective, uh, but not usually one we see in the tournaments. Yeah, I can only think of... Agent, get ready. Well, Mumbai has find the maelstrom, which is kind of mandatory, True. but <laughs> these are the four big ones. But anyway, map number Anyways. through. I think it's your turn now for Rita's and Creek and spin. Indeed, Janus shall be eliminated using a loud SMG as Janus bodyguard and Nolan Cassidy with the next snap and makes it returns, uh, makes it return as Janus nurse. Right, so um, second loud kill for these rookies. Ooh, true. On the other hand, I think it's not the most difficult combination because Janus is followed by bodyguards or. There are a couple in his house. We're not talking about Gunther, but the generic that's, bodyguard. That's uh, one thing you need to be careful about, though, I think. Because if you do gramophone lure, Gunther is the one who follows him into the room, but he's not Janus' bodyguard. Correct. He is a Janus' bodyguard, but not with capital letters. Uh, in any case, you don't really need to bring an SMG because they carry those weapons. I think with the exception of Gunter, actually, so it's it's a uh, it's twice as good to to KO a bodyguard now for the disguise and the item, and of course the next snap with the uh, Janus nurse. Mm, it's a small mini game to look for out, look out for the runner, but other than that, it's not not the most difficult disguise grab. Indeed, Mario starting off default start uh, has an SMG in his briefcase, a trank or uh, a dart gun. Um, in his inventory as well, and is, but I can never. All, all the roads on Whittleton Creek look the same. I can never, never really tell where he's going. But I think it's the general direction of Janus's house. Yeah, from suit start, you are really, uh, you have good timing on the gramophone, because if you get to that room mm -hmm. and turn on the gramophone, then you kind of have the same timing as him leaving this room, which we'll see very shortly. And of course, these guards are facing away from him, so Mario needs no additional distractions here. So that will be a quick isolation, but of course, the disguise is another question. Indeed. Turn on the gramophone. Well, there goes the attention of Janus. Um, Daniel now also starting. Suit start, default start. Uh, packed a trank gun, smuggled in an SMG. So both of the players opting to uh, bring the SMG in instead of grabbing one off the guards. Uh, it's honestly not a big mistake. It's two, nah. talking about two target missions. If your first instinct is to just bring in the weapon no matter what, then you are definitely better off than, of course, missing the how they are in Sapienza or so. Yeah, I guess, like, this spin is also not as low or restrictive or anything, so uh, if you bring that in or not doesn't make a huge difference in this spin. Uh, I don't know if it were, if the Nolan kill required another item, then you could think, hmm, do I want to, like, need or want to bring something else? Uh, can I even afford to bring the SMG or do I need to pick that up on map? However, with this spin, totally not an issue. Then you're taking a different route to Genesis House. Hasn't been spotted so far, and it's very generous on the bushes and gets it to the downstairs bathroom. <laughs> He's also using things, uh, what Mario did, but couldn't get uh, one guard. Instead, he got the two different guards in there. So he has no disguise just yet. And now he does after getting down to the basement. And Daniel will also use his strength to pacify a Janus guard. 
I suppose with uh, the loud AR kill on, uh, not AR, but SMG kill on Janus, not having any actual KO'd bodies lying around is just a good thing. Um, because, well, you're gonna create a panic uh, with those shots. And yeah, if that KO'd body gets found, that's obviously, obviously voids your SA. Uh, Mario now in the Janus bodyguard has his SMG on his back. Uh, upstairs again, turning on the sinks, getting the guards further away from Janus and interested in something else. Might just give him a little bit of more time uh, for the shoot and dump and get out here. Yeah, this is such a nice way to to not get caught by these uh, guards who become enforcers, of course. Even in non trespassing disguise, you might have a tough time escaping, but now both of them in the same room, obviously they will both infiltrate from the same side and Mario can just leave the other way. Let's funk you down. Indeed, and also has one clue from the basement of this house, so it's only the Cassidy Ice remaining and he has quite a good timing for that. Although he is going to go for Jane's nurse now, so might be a bit different. Indeed, on the other side, Daniel's stream just froze for me. Let's hope that that's... Yeah, you're not alone. Okay. Oh, looks like that's a game crash from him. Oh. Oof. That's unlucky. Was just got the Janus kill, uh, or not Janus kill, but Janus isolation down uh, with a trank shot. And Gunther KO on Janus, dragging him down to the basement. Docs.fsnosc.com is the perfect site for this because we do have new crash rules in place and just want to quote in the meantime while you can see Mario grabbing the disguise. I should be able to look up the rule. Yeah, general rule is number 11. Unless it is obvious that the game crash had no impact on the overall outcome of the map, the map will be respawn. These respins are limited to one per person per map. So uh, help me out, but in my understanding, we do have to see out this map. And then if we find that Daniel would have won without his crash, uh, then we can respin. But uh, not not now or not not yet anyway. Mm, yeah, I think the the impact the impact of the crash on the overall outcome of the map is uh, questionable right now. Yeah. Um, so I can I can definitely agree to you there. Um, so we'll we'll see how this plays out, and uh, if it will end up with a respin or not. It's looking like an intriguing uh, race so far. Mario will have to do this peekaboo. He gets this one right first Ooh. try as well. What a rookie. Wow. Incredible plays from him so far. <laughs> that's uh, that's my reaction as well, Blythe. <laughs> and just everyone shocked by this performance. Yeah, and that might be a... Yeah, only the guard bites this time, but I... Hmm. Yeah, I think you can get the same peekaboo a bit later because uh, Nolan will just reset to the same position. Did he can just yeah. if it's consistent, he can just redo what he just did. There, he got Nolan's intention, pushes him into the garage, and with his guard gone, that should now be KO on him. Chain luring him over? Not quite yet. He is he's still investigating. Yeah, so it's one step more difficult for Mario because it's not a chain lure. It's a peekaboo going into a lure, which doesn't have the same uh, formula, I guess. Also the so he would guard. have to wait. Yeah, he would have to wait until the question mark goes over or goes away. <laughs> but of course, it's nice second try. I don't think he really minds this uh, extra time. Of course, he wanted a bit thicker eyes, so, but He's just too close away from Vin. Indeed. Uh, got both kills. 
just needs the two clues being uh, the lawsuit in this shed and the cigar box right outside the shed, basically. Betty being a last final boss of this match, but uh, <laughs> it's just a peekaboo, nothing too much worse. <laughs> we see him in the background. <laughs> we'll be looking towards him, but I think a 47 or Janus Nurse is just hidden in the bushes just well enough so Mario can exit this area. Not just passing anymore and can exit now. Indeed. For now, looks like it's gonna be a 4 0 victory for Mario. Five star SA as per requirement. Yep, there is. Formation for zero victory for Mario. Very well done for him for rookie first match. Um, yeah, I think pressure was on, but he 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 managed it nicely. And uh, yeah, I think we're all we're all very impressed by his performance uh, in this tournament and are stoked to see. Him continue in this tournament. And Just one, one second if, yeah. while you are changing things, I guess, is that we can also see Daniel finishing the uh, Louder Sentry kill. And I just, I am really impressed by these two rookies. Uh, practice or not, like they are clearly, clearly know their game. And uh, in their first ever match, they can get a uh, loud SMG Janus kill. It's that's something I did back in the day. So, <laughs> oh no, me neither, for sure not. I, uh, I think it's I think it's a big congratulations to both of them and we'll be really happy to see them move on in one bracket or the other. Oh definitely, definitely. Um yeah, this was a PC winners bracket round two match already. Both players got a buy in round one basically, uh, because we have an not a perfect bracket. Um that means that Mario will now face Blith in round two uh, round three of the winner bracket, who won against Gordini Roy yesterday. Um and yeah, we'll fight for a chance to face uh, one of Gule, Max Masters, Oh Shit Man, T Nega, Sunny Four, and Young Sak Jitsu. Um, meantime, Daniel's tournament run is not over just yet. He will drop down to round two of the lower bracket, where he will face the winner of Gordini Roy versus loser of match five. Match five is. Uh, barbecue versus Mika. I think that's another match that's coming up relatively soon. Um, speaking of matches that come up, come up relatively soon, we do have some upcoming matches. Just a one and a half hours approximately. Uh, some random person is going to take on Yanini on Santa Fortuna and Dubai, which is going to get cast as well. One for Barbecue. And um, later today, early evening, we have Crudy versus Derek playing on Haven Island and Chongqing. Fairly happy to see Haven Island being picked in this tournament, I can say that. Um, <laughs> Finally. First one, I think. Indeed, I think it's the first one. Uh, 19 o'clock Central European time. Currently no caster is signed, but I'm sure we will find someone. And uh, quite a busy evening. Maddie Spice both Pinua, Sapienza on Paris. Uh, 20 o'clock Central European time. Champion of Volvo Modos, Toby Norton, Joe the Baby Grabber. All four playing simultaneously at 21 o'clock Central European time and uh, another match at 22. Max Masters versus Oh Shit Man and uh, one Barbecue versus Mika early, very early tomorrow technically, 1 a.m. Uh, Sunday. It's all in Central European times on here. However, uh, go ahead and visit hitmaps.com um, for all the upcoming matches in your local time zones so you don't have to do any of that weird uh, calculation stuff with time zones um yeah i think at this point uh, all we have left to say is to uh, thank all of you for watching obviously um thanks to the two players huge thanks to the two players actually for signing up for this tournament first tournament ever and participating in this and uh, congratulations again to mario for winning this match um, thanks to Infrafund for co-casting this match and admitting this match for us. Thank you for having me. And yeah, thanks again to the two rookies for putting on a great show. Definitely. 
Um, and yeah, let's see if there is anyone live just yet. Um, does some hit manning. Doesn't immediately look like it to me. Uh, in that case, I guess I will just go offline here and uh, hopefully see all of you in one and a half hours over on Barbecue's channel for the next match. Until then, see you there.